Telcos are shifting their applications to the public cloud, but it's a tentative process. I'm talking today with public cloud evangelist Danielle Royston, who isn't sitting on any fences when it comes to this topic. So Danielle, you were on a public cloud mission when you were the CEO of your previous company, Optiva. Uh, can you just tell us what you're up to these days? Well, I'm still a little bit in stealth mode, um, so not ready to talk about it just yet, though uh, I think a lot of people keep asking me and they're really excited. So it's, it's really nice that people are still following me and, and keeping up with me. But, um, but I can say that it's still telco and it's still very much the public cloud. I think uh, I'm onto something really, really great and I want to finish what I've started. So I am uh, out there evangelizing, still talking about public cloud launched a newsletter called Telco in 20. And of course, I'm up to my crazy, hilarious tweets on Twitter at, uh, you know, you can follow me at Telco DR. Now, you have a very clear take on Telco Cloud. It's all about the public cloud, definitely not the private cloud. Um, so why is that? Why public rather than private? Yeah, I'm, I've always been one of these people that's very strong around the public cloud, and it's less about me being a visionary. I think people in telco see me as, as visionary and out there, and I feel like I'm just sort of copying what every other industry has done. And a really good example of an industry that I think it's somewhat close to telco is banking, right? Highly regulated, data is super important, privacy and security. And you look at what those people have done, um, and they at this point have moved all their applications to the public cloud. A good example of this is Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan Chase, who 10 years ago was like, never will we move stuff to the public cloud. And then said, okay, you know, the less important parts, you know, less sensitive applications will move, but the core of our of our applications will remain on premise. And then last year he's, you know, last November he's on stage with Andy Jassy from AWS talking about how Public cloud is such a competitive advantage for his organization. He's moving everything to the public cloud, all the applications. And um, I think that's something that Telgo can learn from. We can skip the middle parts, a very expensive, lengthy time around moving to the private cloud and you just go straight to the public cloud. And so that's why I'm pretty much hell bent on this mission to make sure that it happens within Telco. Okay, great. Now, you already mentioned earlier on that you're pretty active uh, on Twitter. And recently you tweeted, I'm going to quote this, stop thinking about public cloud like it's some commodity data center where your apps can run on any cloud. That's the mistake everyone is making in telco. What do you actually mean by that? So I think people's attitudes at the moment where we are in this transformation in our industry is that they're treating the hyperscalers it's just another place to run their applications, right? I can run them here, I can run them there, it doesn't really matter. And I, while I think you're gonna have a primary relationship with one of the hyperscalers and try to you know, put most that you can there, there's gonna be certain applications where your primary hyperscaler doesn't have the technology that particular application needs. And so I'll, ta I'll take an example that I'm very familiar with. And that is, let's say, the charging problem, right? Optiva was a charging software company. And for charging, real-time charging in particular, the database that you select, right, is very important. It's an important technical decision in the design of that application. It's a write-intensive uh, application. And so when I was CEO of Optiva and we were looking at all the hyperscalers and all the databases out there, um, Spanner, actually Google Cloud Spanner was the database to select for this particular problem. And I think there's gonna be other application areas where you're gonna make those decisions. And so it's all about the specialization of the software and not sort of treating it as just compute power with Elastic's you know, scalability. There's actual software capabilities that you need to be able to take advantage of and you should. Okay, great. Now Companies have been talking about, the, the telcos, the operators, have been talking about moving applications to the public cloud for a little while, some more than others. Are you seeing any evidence of any of the, the major telcos moving their applications in a very major way to public cloud platforms? Yeah, I think we are. I think especially this summer, and I'm, I'm not sure if it's because of coronavirus or, or it was 
it, we're just sort of on that natural path anyways, but there's been a couple of really big examples. Um, I think Vodafone's moving in a very significant way. They had their uh, Neuron project announced with Google last October in London at Google Cloud Next, right? Where they're going to, I think, shut down 600 Hadoop servers and I think it's like something like 1,600 data feeds and centralize that within uh, within GCP. Um, they've also mentioned that all their new software that they procure needs to, must be cloud native. Um, I participated in a symposium with AWS in the, over in July and Deutsche Telekom was a presenter where they talked about moving 600, 800 applications to the public cloud. And so that's the first time I've heard sort of like an entire IT, you know, ecosystem moving. And so I think that's really exciting. Um, the orange CEO, uh, sorry, the orange CIO, uh, I think it was about a month ago, mentioned a huge partnership with, with Google. So I think we're starting to see, you know, right, the big groups, uh, really embracing cloud native technology in a big way and thinking about moving all of their ecosystem over. And that's what we've seen in other industries where they see that as a competitive advantage, kind of letting go of, you know, their, their competitors or we're building our own cloud too. We're selling our own services. And they're kind of saying, I'm just going to stand on, you know, this, these billions and billions of dollars of technology uh, investment. I'm going to stand on the shoulders of literally the tech giants of the world, leverage that for my organization and really accelerate our speed of change. And so I think that's, I think it's going to be a tidal wave. It's going to be awesome. And what's the main advice that you would give to a telecom operator right now to help it accelerate and move ahead its cloud strategy? I think the mission has changed, right? The technology and the systems that exist today within telcos have been there since the 90s, right? And that was when voice was huge and wireline was much bigger. And now we talk about all the things that are possible with 5G and 6G and 17G and all these other things. And it's wireless, it's um, data, it's IoT, it's cars. And so I'm not sure that we can take the control panel that exists and jam a couple more buttons onto it and say, yeah, we're really... Um, evolving. I think, um, you know, I like to call it the mission has changed, right? We need to rethink, we need to really rethink the design. And that might be throwing everything you have away and starting over. So it's designed correctly for the public cloud. And so, um, and so that's what I'd be thinking about instead of thinking about, you know, how am I going to maintain all the features and functionality? Um, there's some things that you're just like, it, th that's over, that life is over, and let's really build this for the future. And I think cl the cloud pivot is going to be that opportunity. Well, certainly a lot for the telcos to think about as they advance these next-gen strategies associated with edge, cloud, 5G, and everything that's changing. Um, so uh, to end off this interview, probably this could be the, the toughest question you faced during this interview. What is your favorite movie of all time? So it's a tough question for me. I mean, it's always hard to pick your favorite movie, but I am a movie lover. Um, the year before my son was born, I saw 80, I think I saw 84 movies in the theater. So I love movies. So I, I'm going to have to pick a couple. And so I think the first one I'd pick an indie film. I think everyone's seen this, which is Pulp Fiction, which really just rocked my, my world when uh, Quentin T Tarantino kind of put the three vignettes in different order and they were all sort of intertwined in some way. It was just like so mind blowing. And plus it has my favorite character in the world, which is Winston Wolf, the problem solver. I love that guy. And uh, so that was really cool. I think if I had to pick a documentary, um, I really, really love the uh, Fog of War with Robert McNamara, who was the Secretary of Defense during the uh, Vietnam War. And he talks about how difficult it is to make decisions when you're in the middle of a battle. And uh, I really like that because I just went through an activist fight with Optiva and a lot of those, uh, you know, you wouldn't think that like war concepts would really come into play in business, but they really did. 
And the third movie that I'd recommend would be uh, The Martian, because I think of Mar Mark Watney, uh, the Matt Damon character all the time. Uh, down, you know, when I'm, I look up at the stars, and I think about him growing the potatoes and, again, solving problems, uh, you know, trying to get back to Earth. And I think what, ha what I... All my movies have in common. I really, I really love a problem solver, and I think that's what I'm doing in Telco. Really trying to help Telcos solve problems, make their lives a bajillion times better with public cloud software, and really, you know, bring that awesome customer experience that everyone wants from their Telco. And I think, I think the public cloud will will enable that in a really big way. So excited to do that. Okay, great. That's fantastic, Danielle. I love the way that I asked you for one favorite movie. You gave me three and you managed to get a plug in for the, uh, the public cloud at the end there as well. Good work. And hope to speak to you again soon. And thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. Take care.